to a practice. Oh, first piece of cake. That's what I wasn't trying to do. <laughs> I was trying not to do, pot them all. The butterfly effect really is used as a paradigm of chaos, the idea that perhaps a butterfly flapping its wings in July in New York can determine whether or not it snows in Nottingham in December. So that tiny, tiny change amplifies through the weather systems. It's an overstated example, that's for sure. I mean, in reality, it would make no difference because all of the other perturbations, the wind, the waves, the ripples, aeroplanes coming across would be far more significant. But the concept that some systems are so sensitive as to be essentially unpredictable is very real. And the interesting thing there is that really simple systems show this. Many simple systems show this behaviour. When I hit the, the reds with this cue ball, now I may not be good enough to actually hit them, but the point I want to make here is the configuration of the reds after I hit them with the cue ball is in a sense a, a demonstration of chao chaotic motion. Well, that wasn't very good. That was a pretty boring thing to do. Let's... Yeah, you have a go and I'll hold the camera. <laughs> you see, the reason I've tempted you down here to do this is for once we get you on camera and we guys uh, can have a good laugh at you rather than the other way around. So what this is is, an I is a system, it's a double pendulum. And the idea is to show that even a really simple system like a pendulum that's so regular, of course, it's been used to make clocks for 100 years or so, if you take two of them and couple them together, and give them enough energy, those pendulums can lose completely their regular behaviour and behave completely erratically, chaotically. Now, Brady, what I want you to try to do using your semi-professional skills as a snooker player is to hit the front, the front ball there. Oh yeah, sure, I've forgotten, I'm the cameraman. Okay, yeah, okay, go, wait a minute, I'll move it, I'm waiting for it now. Go. Oh, that's much better. Now, look at that configuration, we'll try to remember where all these balls have gone. In particular, let's look at them up at that far end of the table there. Now, go on Brady, put them all back again and we'll compare the positions. I'll pay you a hundred pounds if you can repeat that condition. No, I, I'll pay you a million pounds if you can repeat that condition. So. Yep. Good, well done. So hit that front ball again as close as you can to the previous position with the same speed and then just look, let's just look at the conditions this time. Okay, fire. There you are, you see, the condition is completely different. And up there, you potted the red. Yeah, you potted the red up there, which you didn't do before. So I saved my million pounds, you see. Here's one pendulum, of course, very predictable, very regular. If we set the thing in motion with quite a low energy, so we lift them uh, slowly, you can see that's also quite regular, the two uh, arms are kind of vibrating against one another all the time. If I lift that right up in the air and then let it go, you can see the system's moving like crazy. Oh, there it's got a load of energy and it's away. So you can see that there's a big uh, change of energy between the lower pendulum and the upper pendulum. And it's meaning that the tips of those penduli are moving in very different ways. And if you track out the motion of the tips of those penduli, you'll see that they fill space pretty much uniformly. So rather than just rocking backwards and forwards along a single arc, they're flying around in a completely erratic way. So just the very fact of having two of these penduli coupled together, two different pivot points, changes completely the long-term behaviour of that system. Even any tiny change away from those initial conditions will eventually produce completely uncorrelated behaviour. In fact, if you, if you do this with a computer simulation, you set the two of them off and perhaps change the start speed by one part in, say, 10 million. After only three or four swings, the motion's completely separate. So that, that kind of sensitivity to initial condition really shows through quite quickly. But if the computer simulation can crunch it when you put the initial conditions in, it's not chaotic, is it, though? It's just different conditions produce different... That's right, that's right. So the laws that determine how these things move are really simple. Essentially, F equals MA, just Newton's second law. So what's going into that, the math, is really simple. However, the trajectory that that produces depends so sensitively to how you set it in motion that the overall picture is very, very messy and very chaotic looking. That's a demonstration of the sensitivity uh, of this problem, this is a many-body problem, lots of billiard balls here, it's a sensitivity to the initial conditions. If you just deviate the point at which you hit that front red by a little bit, or just change the sp speed at which it's hitting, you get a totally different configuration. 
Uh, it's become a very complex problem. Professor, can I ask you this though? You said it's very complex, but if I gave you enough parameters and enough computing power, great, surely... great question. Now this relates us on to on, relate, brings us on to the question of things like like the weather. And you're right. If we could precisely locate all the positions of the reds inside the triangle, we take the triangle off of course, and then locate the starting position of your ball and the direction in which it's going and the speed with which it's going and find out exactly where it hits that front ball, then in principle we could do a pretty good job at predicting the motions. But we find that just we can only specify those things to so many significant figures, those numbers to so many significant figures. And if you start changing those significant figures by a small amount, the effect, the change in the pattern is amplified very, very strongly. And of course, this is very similar to the problem of predicting the weather. You can pr predict the, you know the velocities of all the wind, wind patterns, say, in the Atlantic and the pressures and so on, uh, to a reasonable degree of accuracy, say a couple of percent. And that's great for doing weather forecasting for uh, a couple of days. Uh, or maybe, maybe a week if you're lucky. But uh, f trying to predict the weather six months from now or even one month, month from now is much, much more tricky. And a similar thing is operating for these, these balls. Very, very sensitive to w how you hit that front ball. Usually in a chaotic system, you can write down very simply the equations of motion. So you really understand the physics. You understand the forces that are setting the system in motion. You understand how to write down Newton's laws or alternative formalisms to Newton's laws that tell you how the system will, will evolve. So you understand that. But the problem is that if those laws are such that the system's got several ways in which it can move. So in this case, there's two ways in which the system can, can move. We've got the displacement of that pendulum and the displacement of that pendulum. If the, the, the number of things that's keeping that system constrained is equal to the number of motions it can have, then it behaves regularly. But if you start to take constraints away from the system, then that allows the thing to evolve in a chaotic way. So, so all, all it is, is, in terms of whether a system is chaotic or not, is, is it free to become chaotic? If it is, it will do. The key point about playing snooker, of course, is that uh, there's friction. This ball will not go on forever. So I want to make the very drastic assumption that we're going to neglect friction. So I want you to imagine that this ball, rather than slowing down, just has no dissipation. It can just carry on forever without losing uh, momentum. So let's try this. Now, the other key feature with this, as you see, is that uh, the ball bounces, not quite, but more or less with specular reflection. Specular means it behaves like light hitting and reflecting off a mirror, where the angle of incidence is equal to the angle of reflection. Uh, because the sides of the table, these two sides are parallel, and these two sides are parallel, we've got a rectangle here, it means that the motion that we have when we let this frictionless ball go uh, the motion is not chaotic, it's regular. So before I describe what a chaotic stadium is, first of all I want to show you what a regular stadium is. So let's do it again. We hit this thing really, really hard and we've got our specular reflection and this thing would carry on going and we can write down a very simple equation to describe that motion. So this, this is something that has been sitting in my dad's shed for two or three years and we used to amuse the children with it. It's a sprinkler for the garden so you put your hose on the bottom and it squirts up here, it squirts through this flowing thing. And what happens is it flies around all over the place and flicks water. You can see, see there's a few bits coming out of it. So it flicks water all over. And rather than a circular sprinkler just watering part of your lawn or part of your flower bed, this flicks water all over the place. So everything gets completely soaked. But the principle of it is really the same as this double pendulum. It's another double pendulum system because we've got one pivot here for this tube another one here for the flower head. And so the motion's really the same as this double pendulum. And the fact that the two of them can flick around all over and spray water around all over the place means that you can very easily and efficiently water your garden. If you really want to get something random, just take two very simple systems and let them talk to one another, let them communicate with one another via this pipe. And that's perhaps the strange thing that, that it, it, it really is that taking two things that are so simple, about as simple as you could make it, and letting them interact produces something that's unpredictable, but in this case, useful and well, quite pretty, I guess. We can start off our ball here and send it off. And why is this thing so regular? Well, the ball hits and 
So this angle is equal to that angle. We're assuming there's no friction. We're assuming elastic properties. It carries on in a straight line. It then bounces in a very predictable way. It comes back again. Now, here's a stadium, the Benimovic Stadium, where these rules don't apply. And it's a very easy thing to construct. It's just a couple of semicircles uh, and then two rectangular sides. So instead of uh, these flat edges here and here and parallel edges, we keep these two side ones parallel to each other, but we have curvy bits there. Now, immediately you see, we see that two interesting types of orbit. Clearly, a trajectory like that, where the ball just bounces back and forth here, is very boring. And also, this one, back and forth here, is completely predictable. And I can also devise another type of motion. Let me see if I can draw it. Yeah, I can do this one. If I just get that diamond one right, that uh, is simple and is completely stable. However, there's another class of, of trajectories uh, where things get much more complicated. If I just do some general trajectory where I start, say, here, off the mid position and go around here, then with specular reflection, I can do this following my simple rules. And you can see how this is beginning to look a bit interesting now. Uh, what's going to happen? I've got to do that specularly. So it's going to come over here and then go up there and there, there. Now what's it going to do? It's going to come back here. So if you start doing this, this motion just goes on, on forever. It, it never reproduces. Path is far from periodic. And in particular, if I just change this trajectory by a little bit, a little bit, then I'll end up very quickly getting a, a, an orbit that's much, much different from the one that when I started off by sending the particle this way. So huge sensitivity to initial conditions. Now, too hard for me.